Do you have an email? Adam? Adam. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Lev. Um, the rest of the time we're going to do an introduction to C. Like I mentioned to you before, uh, C will be used in Lab 2. Um, and then all semester we're going to do what we call this side-by-side -side development where um, one side of the screen we're going to write in assembly and the other side of the screen we're going to write it in, um, in C. Okay? Um, if you recall from last week, we've been talking about I.O. Uh, we talked about um, we talked about direction registers. That's not the right key. Okay, click on that one. Pen. We talked about registers. Uh, we talked about um, accessing memory. Uh, we called functions in assembly language. Now we're going to do them in C. I mentioned what a variable was. What's a variable? Okay, a variable, that right answer. The variable contains values, okay? Contains values. And we saw two types of variables so far. What were they? Globals and locals. And a global variable exists where? Everywhere. Every, not every time. It exists everywhere, that's right. Every, everywhere, every time. Permanent. And where does the local exist? Okay, the local variable is, is reduced in what we call scope. Well, who can access it? And when we did in assembly language, how did we implement local variables? In, in, in assembly language, we created a temporary variable how? We wanted a number, you know, we wanted a temporary... No, no, that's C. We're going to use int and C to make... Uh, like whatever, label. No, 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 that's, you know, get, get, you, uh, it's, I'm asking a very simple question. I'll ask it again. You want to, you know, I don't want to, I want a very simple answer. I need a counter. It goes from 1 to 10. Temporarily, where would you put it? A register, okay? So we've seen registers, okay? I told you it was a simple question. All right, um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add more features both in C. We're going to do C today. We'll do these again in assembly language later. Uh, how do we create functions? How do we pass parameters? How do we create arrays? Um, and that uh, is where we're going. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we talked about variables, and variables contain data. And you remember that space. That space pseudo op in assembly language, what did it do? What went on this side right here? What did I put right here? Right where I wrote the word MY. A label, that's the name of my variable. Okay? I started out calling it data, that was a stupid name. Uh, my is even equally stupid. Okay? But, and then what goes on the other side of space? A number. A number. Like what? Two or four. Oops, back, back. What if I want an eight bit variable? One. It's not the number of bits, it's the number of bytes. Okay? And in assembly language, when I want to access a global variable, um, <clears throat> that's how I created it. I use LDR to read it in SDR to store it. And as you saw from reading the book, if I want to access a 16-bit variable, I'm going to use an H. And if it's a signed 16-bit number, I'm going to use an SH. Okay, so unsigned, signed. And then if it's an 8-bit variable, there's going to be a B in there. This stands for half word. That stands for byte. If it's a signed 8-bit number, it's SB. And if it's unsigned, 8-bit. It's a B. And then when I store, it'll be a B. So, okay, question, go. Is that C on the left and assembly on the right? Yes. And then yes. So, you, so the question was, this all this stuff I've just talked about is assembly. These are all assembly instructions here. And then this doesn't matter whether you're talking about a global or a local variable. Either way, it'll still be like... Uh, okay, so uh, it does matter. 
he said, is it matter whether it's global or local on the left side, on the, on the right side here in assembly, it matters because I don't have to load and store local variables. They're already in the registers. So when I use load and store for the globals, and I'll use these, these instructions for the globals. Now on the, the other side, the left side, uh, this is the C side, uh, we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to decide whether we want 16, 32, or 8-bit variables, whether they want to be signed or unsigned, uh, <coughs> or their characters. And now this won't matter whether it's global or local over here. These, this will work for both globals and locals. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Uh, I mentioned... So go. Is, is there a, a SGRSH? Okay, the reason why there's no SH is because when I store, when I load a little number into a big register, right, a 16-bit into a 32-bit, the question becomes, what do I do with the extra bits? Okay, I'm either going to sign extend it if it's SH or zero pad it if it's H. And the same thing with 8 to 32. I'm going to either sign extend it or I'm going to zero pad it. This is a zero pad, that's a sign extend. But when I go store, I'm going from a big number, a 32-bit number, when I do a store, I take a 32-bit register and I'm going to store it into a 16-bit into a 16-bit memory location. I gotta throw away the top bits, regardless of whether it's signed or unsigned. So I don't have a separate instruction for signed or unsigned when I store. Yeah, practice, it's fun, yeah. So H means it's for 16-bit and B. Yeah, H stands for half word. Oh, okay. And half word is a 16-bit thing. Great, good question. She said, what's the H stand for, half word? So that's why none of the stores have uh, signed Yeah, because it's not an, ex you do, when you do a store, you don't, he said, there's no sign extension when you store, and that's because it's, it's actually, a, it's not an extension, it's a, it's a demotion. It's a reduction in bits to go from 32 down to 16. I have to toss out the top 16 bits regardless of whether it's signed or unsigned, which means it might have an error. Question? All right. Wait, yeah. Okay, so if I uh, give me a, uh, let me do 8-bit numbers because they're easy on my head, okay? Uh, if I have a, um, if I have an 8-bit variable and I store the number 100 in there quick, Someone tell me the hex for it. One, one. 100, 100, 100 decimal is what in hex? Uh, 64. 64, you guys are awesome. If you can't do that real fast, don't, don't be intimidated. Anyway, that's the number 100, okay? When I load it, okay, when I do an LD, assuming it's unsigned, right? I, when I do an LDRB, that 64 is bumped up to 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 64, right? When I do an LDRB. But now if I add register whatever to itself, and now I have 200, right? I have 200 in register, right? Somebody tell me what 200 is? No, 200, right? I just want to multiply 64 times 2, right? No, yeah, uh, six. Yeah, okay, fine. I've got to do four hundred. Yeah, six, twelve, C eight. Uh, I got to go bigger. All right, let's multiply it again. That's right, so, okay. Let me uh, let me just pick a bigger number. Two hundred. I'll multiply it again, <coughs> and now I'm gonna get uh, one. I multiply times two. I multiply times two again, and I have a one eight one one nine one one nine zero. Oh. There we go. Four hundred. Yeah, sure. Right? So I have the hexadecimal 0x0000010. Zero 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 in the register, and I do an STRB. What happens? Right? I'm going to chunk out the, the one and store that into the memory. So whenever you store you're demoting back to the smaller value. Your job to make sure that don't happen. Yeah. So the U um, for C 
means it's unsigned? Uh, yes, yes, great question. You said, look at all the, how do I tell and see whether it's signed or unsigned? Somebody answer her. U stands for unsigned and no U stands for signed. Why does it matter for 32? Oh, because, <clears throat> because uh, she, and she had it's a wonderful question. <clears throat> On the Cortex-M, where there are 32-bit registers, it actually doesn't matter, but on your 64-bit laptop or your 128-bit program that you're going to create when you grow up, it'll matter. So in C, since they don't know the architecture, you will decide whether to call it signed or unsigned. And we're actually, it actually matters even if it's 32 bits, and we'll get there. Yes. But right now, it's your job to know whether it's signed or unsigned. <clears throat> it's your job to know whether it's 16, 32, or 8. And care stands for characters, letters, and symbols. Aren't the actual type names for C like unsigned? Ah, long fine. Yeah, it's fine. Signed in. All right, fine. You want to call this C99? I'll call it C99. He said there are many, many names and many, many languages, and as you already heard, it don't matter. We're using C99. <coughs> C99 is a is a more standard. It's a easier to teach than short, long, and care. We're going to teach C99. Those are the ones we're going to do. And I sprinkled in some old stuff that I forget to change. So I guess when would you need to use care? For care? We're going to use care for, for characters. Like, like the, you know, your initials. You know, a J and then a V. Or how do I store the letter J? You know, I want to store it in a character variable because it's a character. Identified as, as a character, yeah. It's a seven bit ASCII character. Yeah. Question. So Go. only ASCII goes into characters. Oh, if you're if you're he said he only ASCII goes into characters, I don't know. There's never only is too strong a word. Yeah. If you're writing good code, typically. It, typically you'll put ASCII into characters, that's the right thing, but it's actually it turns out it's exactly the same thing as this. By the way, so you could put negative 100 in there and it would still work. It just would be bad code. Yeah. What does it mean when you say global is capital and local? Okay, so uh, don't you hate to be told which side of the road to drive on? And don't you? The question is, what's the cap? <laughs> yeah. Rules are terrible. <laughs> you know, you got to eat three meals a day, and you got to pay your bills, and you got to tuck in your shirt, and you got to wear a tie to expo. And the rules are just horrible. You know, can't grow a beard. <clears throat> and there's a lot of rules about writing software, and I don't want to talk about those rules today, except that uh, rules. You know, if people didn't drive on the correct side of the road, we'd have chaos. It would sort of be fun for a while, but <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use a programming style in the book and in class that sort of does weird stuff even be just because I want to. I'm going to drive on the right side of the road just because it would be nicer if everyone drove on the right side. Every global variable I have is going to be um, capitalized. And every local variable I have is going to have a lowercase start. Yeah. Right, so, just to clarify on the assembly side of things, LDRH would zero extend whatever value you put into it. Oh, yeah. SH would sign extend. Yes, absolutely. And the same thing with LDR. He said LDRH takes a 16 bit mem memory chunk, adds 16 zeros to create a 32 bit number, and puts that in the register. Yeah. Uh, but as he said, isn't the memory 8 bits? Absolutely. But how do I read? And let me ask you a question that you already know the answer to. Back when you did an LDR, what did you get? You got an address. And when you fetched from that address, what did you get? You filled up a register with what? How much data? When you, when you did an LDR, when you read from um, uh, whatever with an LDR, you fill up the entire register, which is how big? 32. And how do I read 32 bits from an 8-bit memory? Four of them in little Indian format. So how do I read? How do I read LDRH? With two. I'm going to read two, uh, 
two memory locations, chunk them together, little Indian style, and zero pad the other four, or sign extend for that one. Did that answer your question? Yo, oh, yeah, that's the whole point. He said, I'm accessing variables of different size. Yeah, welcome to the complicated big boy world, right? Big girl world. Yeah. And it gets more complicated than this, but yeah, it's your job to know whether it's 8, 16, or 32, whether you're writing in C, or Java, or, or wherever, Python, or whether you're drive, writing in, in assembly language. And, but they're not two different things. When you access uh, an int, an int 16 variable, what opcode do you suppose it's using? LDRSH. That's how it works. That's why we do them both. Okay, we talked about local variables having scope. In other words, where do they, you know, when do they exist? And someone correctly said everywhere, that's right. Or are within uh, some small spot or local. And then where do they physically exist, either in, in memory as globals or in registers as locals? And for C, does the label go? I forget. Oh, I got, no, yeah, yeah, fine. We'll get there. Okay. And C, we're going to, we're going to, it goes after. But we'll get there. All right. Um, we're going to, uh, in, in, um, types matter. Types matter when you do an assignment. So when we take a, a value and we assign it into a variable, we're going to create a value, a number of a certain type, and we're going to store that type into, into this variable of the same type. Okay? Uh, you don't want to store minus 100 into an unsigned variable. That don't make sense. Okay? That's, a, that's a mistake. The same thing when we add and subtract and multiply, divide, and take modulus, we're going to, by and large, uh, operate on the same type. So we're going to decide on a type for our equation, and we're going to perform that same operation. Um, we can, uh, arithmetic operation obviously takes two numbers and gives us another number. Um, Number, operate number, plus number. Okay, it takes a number, it takes another number, and gives us a number. Okay. Logical operations also take numbers. And give us another number. Then there we got the and and the OR, and the exclusive OR, and the complement, and the right shift, and the left shift. Those are all logical operations. They take a 32-bit number, and they operate on another 32-bit number to give you another 32-bit number, and typically in a bitwise fashion for these, okay? Each bit uh, at a time. On the other hand, we have another thing that's not numbers. We have things called Booleans, and Boolean is a true or a false. And, uh, False being zero and true being any number not zero. So a true false is Boolean. Oh, my favorite thing is fuzzy logic. Where fuzzy logic you can have maybe. Oh, here's another one. In the security world, there's, a, there's another classification of Boolean. True, false, and unsecure. You don't believe it. There's a number in the computer, but it might be, it might be bad. And so we're going to start with the simple stuff, but it'll be fun for you to blow your mind and think about things that aren't true and false. But we're going to deal with true and false this semester. So a relational <laughs> operation is going to take two numbers <coughs> and operate on it to give you a boolean. Right? Obviously, is a is you know is a greater than 10 is going to take the number, can take the value out of variable A, the number 10, and tell you which is bigger, A or 10, and give you a true if it's bigger. Um, I don't ever remember the precedence. The precedence is uh, if you have a whole bunch of operations in the same, in the same A whole bunch of operations in the same 
uh, row. There's a rule about which one you do first. I don't know what it is, and so what I usually do is add, I am what's called a parentheses zealot. A zealot is a crazy person, uh, and I put in so many parentheses that I know exactly what it's doing just to make sure it does what I want it to do. Okay? But nevertheless, don't expect your lab partner to know what the precedence is, which one happens first, especially as, uh, as you do this. This one is probably not what you expect to be. This, is, this, is, this one here you're going to get wrong. Ah, come on. Am I racing? No. A plus plus B shifted once. Okay, we'll come back here. All right. That's gone. Okay, this is a divide by two. What do you suppose this is? You won't have uh, how many think it's this? Uh, uh, sidebar, uh, there's a third option. You have no idea which one it is. Okay? There's a third choice. How many thinks it's this? How many thinks it's this? How many don't know? Yeah. One person got it right. It's this. Yeah, isn't it stupid? <laughs> Nobody knows what precedent is. You can either look it up or add the parentheses. Because, yeah, fine. Yeah, don't guess. Don't guess. Look it up. Yeah. Uh, if you try to store a Boolean value into a Boolean variable, sure. is it a time? No. No, you can store Booleans into a, into a variable because it then becomes a Boolean variable. So you don't have to specify the type of the variable? No, well, you know, any, any of the types can be Boolean, right? Because it can store zero and not zeros. Uh, there are some, he said, can I store Booleans into variables that used to have numbers in it? Yeah. But normally you'd have a Boolean variable mm -hmm. and you'd always store Boolean stuff in the Boolean variable, but variables are just numbers. I mean, Booleans are just numbers, zero and not zero. All right, let's go on. All right, so um, we, we saw the, 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 the list of, we saw the list of, of, um, Variable types, if you're going to make a global variable, it's going to look like this, right here. This is an example of a global variable. You give it the type, you put a space, then you give it the name, and you put a semicolon, and that shows up in RAN, okay, with the name height. And you notice I put it, made it capital H? Ooh, did you notice that? That's my rule about globals, capital H. And then I can operate on it. Uh, so, for instance, if I wanna if I wanna do something or something else, uh, I can use the if statement. The if statement takes a, inside the if it's gonna take a boolean. So a greater than m. We're assuming a and m are the same variables of the same type. And if A is greater than M, it executes this. And if this A is less than or equal to, it skips it all together. Um, yeah, this is an example of a convert, uh, convert lowercase, convert uppercase to lowercase. So uh, these are, this is going to be a care variable. And if that care variable is greater than or equal to A and less than or equal to Z, then I'm going to subtract off the difference between A and add the difference between A and C, converting lowercase to uppercase. Um, you can have an else. So if this is if A is greater than B and this is if A is less than or equal to B. So this is the true and that's the false part. <coughs> Question about if that, if. Notice all my stuff ends in a semicolon. Uh, I use the brace to open up a, a segment. So if I want to execute a whole bunch of stuff like i equals zero, where there is some um, 
I have some variable i, and I can do two things inside the loop. This brace aligns with that brace. Okay, so I can do both of those things. So I'm most I'm a zealot for what? S parentheses. I'm also a zealot for braces. And so I always put a brace in there just to make sure it's very clear in my mind that the beginning of this if statement begins with that brace, the end of that if statement ends in that brace, and I'm done. Um, <clears throat> the, the int, main, void, business, that's a weird stuff. That's just the name of my C program. Yeah. Um, can you do else ifs or do you just like nest the ifs inside the I can do all sorts of things. Can we, can I put, he said, can I do weird stuff? Absolutely. Yes, but not, not in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I won't need it. Yeah, uh, what, go? You have to say uh, A or B of the variables before. Yeah, I sure, yeah, you're totally right. Uh, this is a single pass compiler. Somewhere up here above is going to be something like uint 32 underline T A and M. Sometime before I get there, I'm going to have to set A equal to something and M equal to something. All right, so I'm going to create a variable, either local or global. I'm going to fill them up, and then I'm going to execute this code. Yeah, good question. So letter, when it says letter is greater than or equal to character A, does it refer to ASCII value? Yeah, that quote A, quote is, okay, so uh, let's see. We've got weird people who know what the number 100 is in hex. Anybody know what the letter A is in hex? No. Oh. It's not hex 65. Yeah, you're 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 almost he's half weird. It's decimal 65, by the way. Oh. 41. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, he's memorized his ASCII table. So he's a weird one. Don't have to memorize the ASCII table. You just can use quote A quote and then it'll get you the right 64. Yeah. Um, they do, yeah. That's how that works. I didn't have to do each one separately until you get the stupid Unicode, and then it gets weird. But this is asking. Yeah. Question. What? Go go ahead. You have to speak up. Okay, so you talk about this one or that one? First, uh, this, this, the first one here. Yeah, this one. Okay, if you have Justin, he said, what happens if uh, you know if it's true or if it's false? Okay, if with an if, you're going to execute this stuff between that brace and this brace if it's true. If it's false, you're going to skip that, and in both cases, you're going to end up here. So, whereas in the if with the else, you execute this part there, if it's what true, true. if because there's only two choices, it's either true or not true. Okay, if it's false, you're going to execute that, and in both cases, you end up here. To answer your question. If it's false, you guys see in this. I don't know. I understand the thing I said. I'm still wondering about the thing. Let's say, so basically, we go one step at a time. So even if it's true or false, we just we go to the second step. No, no. So I'm going to, this is going to happen. This one happens first. Right? I'm going to compare A to M. If it's true, I'm going to execute this. If it's false, I'm not going to execute that. So, so if you think about one, two, three, I always execute one, I always execute three, and two, I'm either going to do if it's true, and I'm not going to do if it's false. Well, think of this in flowchart form. All right, when I compare A to M, how many choices do I got? Two. What are they? Is A greater than M or is A less than or equal to M? If A is less than or equal to M, I do an absolutely nothing. If A is greater than M, I'm going to execute this one. And then end up back here. 
Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And I keep, okay, I, I confused you. All right. These are two separate, completely unrelated efforts. Which, what I would execute the second if, regardless of whether the first if was, was done. Because in C, it executes from top to bottom until you hit a whatever function. Whatever. Uh, that, that the unsigned of, uh, like, on the very right. I, slow this one here yeah all right so um, what's the purpose okay uh, just to teach you if you said what's the purpose of this uh, I could say that um, this is the height of this is the height of your ball bouncing and if it goes under the floor so far it's going to come back up to the end there's no purpose I mean, this tells you if height happens to be illegal, right? Let's say height was supposed to be any number between minus 5 and plus 5. And if it goes too low, it will then reset back to start. Like Candyland, you know, go back to go, you know, slide down the slide and you end up in the... It's, there's no purpose. We'll get to, we get, let's make a purpose, all right? And as a matter of fact, let's do a purpose. I like that. I like you. Yeah, one more question on this slide. And then, uh, just a question. Letter is a local variable, correct? Yeah, just, just like, yeah. And what type is letter? No, yeah, what, oh, no, what type is it? Care. Care. So somewhere, either local or global, I'm going to have to put in care. Yeah, you're totally right. I shouldn't. And do things like, in, like, to the if then if then else is that like just gibberish right now or is yeah it's totally it's gibberish in a sense this one this one here actually does something this one here takes a ASCII letter which is anything you can think of a z x uh, plus space and if it happens to be a capital letter it converts it to the equivalent lowercase Oh, so that's what that, that's what that actually case. does. Okay, I was just confused. Yeah, I don't care. Can I say I don't care? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's do let's do some C. Let me switch gears here. Come on, stop. Yeah, oh, wait, hold on. Go. Okay, can you don't get legal on me? He said, do I need the void there or not? It all depends on which compiler you're using. Our compiler will take either. Um, you can either uh, you can either leave the void or put the void in. Can I can I say I don't care? For and the same thing with the int. Those are not used in this embedded system, so it doesn't really matter. For example, here I left the void in. I could take the void out and it wouldn't matter. Just void right here doesn't matter. All right. Great question. Let's talk about the, pro the, the, the components of a C uh, program. As you know, it's written in .c. What was in .startup, you remember? Have you ever looked at, look in dot, you've been using .startup, in there it tells you where to start. Okay? And in your assembly language, where did it start? Start. And in C, it starts in main. Yeah, yeah, fine. That's just the way that's... Okay, so at the very top it are some things that we're going to do. But Lev called them breadcrumbs. Like, a year from now, I'm going to look at this code and go, what in the crap is this code for? And I'm going to read these comments and go, oh, it's a not gate. You know... That's what it is. That's what the comments say. Okay, fair enough. It's a not gate, but what are my inputs? I don't know. I don't remember. Well, I'm going to read it. It's going to say hey, PE1 is, is the output to the LED, and PE0 is the input from the switch, both in positive logic. Now I can build it, right? And okay, fine. That's my input. So what does it do? <clears throat> okay, when you push the switch, the light goes off, and you let go of the switch, the light goes on, right? Not as complicated as Skylark, but. Uh, Kind of fun, and it's yeah, really fun. Remember, 
I will pat it around. Uh, what's going to happen when you push the button? What does the, com the comment say? It goes up. Okay, so there's the button. Push it. See what happens. Right. Doesn't blink. But the push the button, pass it on. The wire falls out. I don't care. So All right. do we edit in startup or not? No, don't, don't edit startup. Look at it, but don't edit it. All right, so um, as you know, um, as you know, uh, s okay, what's the next part is a bunch of, uh, the, in C we'll have these includes. Um, throughout this semester, we're always going to include standard.int. Uh, that means we're going to be able to, in standard.in, it's going to define that, all those variable types we just had on the slide, uint32, uint16, int32, int16, those types are defined in the standard ints in here so that we can use them. This one, uh, as you might imagine, from the names, does, anybody, does that look familiar, those letters? That's your processor, that's your TM4C uh, Cortex-M. So in there are all the port definitions. You don't have to memorize where the ports are. Right. Uh, I'll come back to init F in a moment. Let's go down here to main. And there you go, I violated my rule already, so I'll fix it. I said we use C99, I meant it. I got two global variables in and out. Where do they exist? Everywhere. They're in RAM and anybody can access them. Okay? Yeah, go. So are they global it's because of where you place them? Oh yeah. Yeah, like 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 yeah, you said they're global. How did I tell them they were global? I can make them local if you want. Now they're local. So where they if it's inside a brace, it's local. And and that means where is it? Yeah, but where, where's it going to be when it runs? In registers. It might end up on the stack, but it's in registers. Okay? And if I put it there, it goes in global memory, in RAM, and exists forever. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of things in startup.s that, that, that are interesting to you. Uh, he said, what's in startup.s? Uh, let me ask you another question. Uh, how big, how, uh, what's a stack? What is a stack? Okay, so he said a stack is a, great answer. A stack is a bunch of memory locations that you put temporary crap in. Right? And to two operations on the stack or what? What? Push and pop. And now I ask him, okay, man, where is it? Because that's your job. You gotta know everything. Or how much stuff do you got? Well, here's your answer. Okay, your stack is exactly one thousand twenty four bytes big. And there it is with another area that you don't have to know, but there, there's, there it is, that's how big it is. That's your space. You remember what space does? What does space do? Allocate space in RAM. That's actually where your stack showed up. Yeah. So you make the stack bigger? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's plenty big enough for you, but, she, but she's, she's got needs. I can't make it 100 million, why? <laughs> You only got 32 kibibytes of RAM. You don't got those Texas memory systems with... <clears throat> How big were your uh, memories, Lev? How big were your memories when you did your memory thing at, at Texas uh, memory systems? Terabi terabytes? Okay, these folks have... <laughs> yeah, these, these, these... See that, and we have kilobytes, 32 of them. Yeah. Good. That was a good question. Uh, the other thing is, where does it start? When you hit the reset button, it turns out that the, uh, the location that you start in is called a vector table, and there it is, location 4 in ROM. Location 4 in ROM is where it starts when you hit the reset button, and it'll eventually call main. Those are the two things that you got to know from startup. How big your stack is and where does it actually start. 
We will talk about all this fun stuff. Now, you did some of this in 306 and BME 303. Where have you heard the word handler before? What word? The word handler? Uh, interrupts. Interrupts. And, you know, big boy, big girl world, there's over 200 of these interrupts. There's a lot. We'll do just a few. All right. All right, so... Uh, <clears throat> I forget the include SVD is basically the equivalent of like assembly start, right? No. Include what? This this is yeah, just just this one just <clears throat> this include <clears throat> means define the C uh, the C ninety nine variables. That's all it is. This is define the I.O. ports. There's nothing here, there's no magic. It's all here. Okay? What does an assignment do in C? Two sides on the <clears throat> right hand side is what? A data, a value. And on the left hand side is what? A variable or a location. <clears throat> In this context, that location, as you know from the last week, is the clock register for the ports. Okay? So it takes a value and stores it in the clock register. In C, if you put a variable on the other side of the equal sign, what do you get? When it evaluates the right-hand side of this thing, when I put a variable in there, what do I get? The value, the value of that variable. So I'm going to take the existing value of the clock register, or it with a 20, and store it back in the clock register. <clears throat> Which, as you know, did what? With, look at big picture, little picture. From a little picture standpoint, I set bit five, right? But from a big picture standpoint, what did I do? Turn on the clock. Turn on the clock. Yeah, and that's port F. Okay. All right. So let me go down and do. Yeah, let me go down and do port E again. Sorry. I'm going to do this one. That was port F. I'm going to do port E. Come turn on port E. Okay. And after we turned it on, what did I have to do? I had to do a delay. And so in this compiler, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a local variable, I'm going to store a number into there, and I'm going to say, hey, compiler, don't optimize it. Don't throw it out. And so I made it volatile. So I made a local variable called delay. Uh, <coughs> I stored some stupid value in there just to waste a couple of seconds. Okay. All right, but I'm a lazy typer. Okay, this uh, this operation here is something I do a lot, and so I'm going to replace it with this one. <clears throat> These two are identical. I don't need to do them both, so I'll get rid of that one. Uh, line 29 and line 30 are exactly the same code. They're just less typing. Okay, with me? Yeah. What is the lock? Uh, can I, he said, what's the lock? And I say, I don't care. Does, they, you have to, port F, bit zero is locked. And you have to unlock it. Either in C and in assembly. So if, once we start using port F, bit zero, you're going to have to unlock it. Port D bit seven also has to be unlocked. I want you to understand this line of code here in C. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to just go down and do the rest of the stuff that you already know. And uh, again, this is the same line as this one. Is I take a I read port E. I or it with 20 and I store it back. Huh? That's that sets the. So the vertical line basically. That's oh yeah, vertical line is an or. And uh, and is a. Uh, let me do this one. Uh, put this guy in there. 
All right, what is the, what is the twiggle? That's the knot. So if I were to, if I were to break this down by step by step, what would, what would 0x10 not be? If I take all the bits and I invert them, what do I get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, F, something like that. Did I get enough Fs? No. Oh, yeah, F, it's, a, it's not there. It's E. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Right? All the bits, but that one. <clears throat> that one's the ones place, not the 16th place. But that's not. This is, the, this is bit four. Oh, that, one. that one's bit four, right there. You see it, right there, bit four. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, you're totally right. Uh, yeah, I yeah, do. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. You're you're smart. You're smart. I, I made a mistake. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let me. Uh, uh, and then, the the middle of my code is I'm going to read the variable. I read the input. I masked it with one, just like I did in, you know, in the assembly language version. I inverted it, I shifted it, and I output it. Okay. So let me summarize what you learned in C. How do I create a variable? Type name. How do I create two variables? Type, name, comma, name. Okay? What does the equal sign do? Assigns. assigns. It calculates a value on this side of the equal sign and assigns it into there. Every line in C ends with what? Semicolon. That's how it knows one thing. Uh, the while loop is the thing that occurs over and over again. We saw if, and we saw if then as a way for you to also solve this problem. Could you have solved this problem with if and then else? I'll give you that as a thought exercise. Solve the not problem with an if. This, this code here you have on your computer already. This is not, right? This is the not gate project. Try to solve this with the if then else uh, code. All right, so we're, uh, we're learning C. We're going to do loops and and arrays and stuff next time. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and you know read this portion of the book. Ask lots of questions. Uh, thank you very much. Good luck if you're uh, going to Expo.